Today on The Hookup, we're going to look at a new product called the Shelly One that directly competes with everyone's favorite $5 smart switch. Does it have the right features to dethrone the Sonoff Basic as the go-to device for DIY smart home enthusiasts? Let's find out. A few weeks ago, I was contacted by the CEO of a Bulgarian robotics company called Alterco Robotics. They had just launched a new Wi-Fi enabled relay that was designed specifically with makers in mind. And he was wondering if I'd like to review it on the hookup. I told him I'd love to check it out with the understanding that I would give a fair, unbiased, honest review. So here it is. I've had the Shelly one for about a week now and I've been putting it through its paces. Let's start out by talking about a completely unmodified experience. My first impression taking it out of the box was that I couldn't believe how small it was. If you've ever tried to fit a Sonoff Basic inside of a standard switch box, you know that it can't happen without some modification of the casing. The Shelly One is about the size of two Oreo cookies stacked on top of one another, which allows it to easily hide behind your existing switches in the switch box. The Shelly One comes with firmware pre-installed to use with the Shelly app for iPhone and Android, and it interfaces with the Shelly Cloud. It behaves pretty much like any other off-the-shelf smart home product that you've ever bought. You hook it up, you open the app, you connect to Shelly via its broadcasted SSID, and then you put in your personal Wi-Fi information. The app is nice and it has options for scenes, rooms, and schedules, and they have a Google Home and an Amazon Echo skill to enable voice control. The app gives you the option to control the device locally or connect it to the Shelly Cloud. They have a well-documented REST API, so even though a Home Assistant integration isn't available yet, it shouldn't be hard to create one and I imagine it'll be coming soon. I did monitor the non-cloud enabled Shelly traffic with Wireshark for 24 hours and I didn't see any outgoing packets, only local multicast requests. So that's encouraging. But if you watch this channel, you probably already know that using this app isn't really an option for me in my smart home. I prefer to have complete control over my devices, which means I need to know exactly what's in the firmware code. The great news is that the Shelly One is actually made to have its firmware changed, and you don't need to have a 3D printed part or a soldering iron to do it. You don't even need to open up the case, although I did brute force it open just to satisfy my curiosity on how they fit everything in such a small package. More on that later. On the back of the Shelly One is an exposed set of female headers for RX, TX, VCC, Ground, and GPIO Zero. And if you've ever worked with a Sonoff, you know that these are the five pins that you need to have access to in order to flash the ESP8266. Before we talk about custom firmware though, let's look at some of the interesting differences between the hardware of a Sonoff and the Shelly One. Number one, on the Shelly One, the relay is isolated. It doesn't just send the 120 or 240 volts AC through to the output like a Sonoff does. The Shelly has a relay in and a relay out terminal, meaning you can use this to switch low voltage if you want. Number two, the Shelly One is rated at 16 amps. Most people see the 10 amp rating on the Sonoff and they figure it doesn't really matter since they aren't going to be powering any 10 amp devices with a Sonoff. The advantage of having the Shelly rated at 16 amps is that it ensures that the Shelly will not be the device that fails in an overcurrent situation. Since most household switches are tied to a 15 amp breaker, a Sonoff could be as much as 50% over its rated current without tripping the breaker, and that could result in a fire. Since the Shelly should be able to handle 16 amps based on its rating, it means that the breaker should trip before the Shelly fails. It's worth noting that some Sonoffs are rated for 16 amps, like the TH16, but they cost about three times the price of a standard Sonoff Basic, and they're quite a bit bigger. Number three, the Shelly can also be operated with 24 to 60 volts of DC. You just move the jumper to the other two pins and you're ready to operate in DC mode. Sonoff makes the Sonoff SV, which can be operated from five to 24 volts, but again, that's a completely separate device. Number four, the Shelly One GPIO cannot and should not be used when connected to mains voltage. While the Sonoff makes reasonable efforts to isolate the high voltage and low voltage side of the board, the GPIO headers on the Shelly are directly tied to the AC lines. Specifically, the ground on the header is tied directly to the hot wire or line voltage pin from the AC input. I repeat, do not ever attempt to use the GPIO headers on the Shelly One when it's connected to mains voltage. 
Which leads me to my next point. When using a Sonoff, we often use the GPIO pins to connect external switches or push buttons. As I said before, this would be extremely unsafe on the Shelly 1 because those pins are actually carrying high voltage in reference to the neutral or ground wire in your house, which could result in a serious shock. So how do you switch the Shelly 1 manually? The Shelly includes a switching terminal labeled SW. Applying mains voltage to the SW pin grounds GPIO 5 and triggers the relay. This means you're welcome to keep your existing AC switch since it's rated for mains voltage, but you can't use a low voltage switch like people often do with the Sonoff. Now that we've covered the hardware, let's look at the software. The most valuable addition to a Sonoff Basic, and the reason that it's become such a favorite among DIY smart home enthusiasts, is the ability to flash the custom Tasmoda firmware. So naturally, I had to see how the Shelly 1 handled Tasmoda. Obviously with the Shelly 1, we get to skip a few steps in the process since our header pins are available from outside the cover. You'll still need an FTDI adapter, and you'll still need to make sure that that adapter has the 3.3 volt output selected, or you'll fry the chip. Hook up some jumper wires according to this wiring diagram, and you're ready to go. Tasmoda uploads and flashes exactly as it does on a Sonoff Basic. If you've never flashed Tasmoda, you can go watch Dr. Z's video on the most current way to get that done. When I uploaded the stock Tasmoda image and I arrived at the web interface, the toggle button obviously wouldn't work. And that's okay. We just need to set up the GPIO pins correctly for this particular device. If you go to configuration and then configure module, you can select generic from the drop down menu and then put GPIO 4 as relay 1 and GPIO 5 as switch 1. Hit save and now you'll be able to toggle the relay via the web interface. Great. But the switch still wasn't functioning for me. At first, I thought that the Shelly documents might have been incorrect and the switch wasn't actually tied to GPIO 5. So I tested all the pins and none of them were working. Combing through the Shelly 1 documentation, I noticed that it said that it was made to have the SW pin float when not switched on. But the Tasmoda firmware activates a pull-up resistor on each GPIO when they're configured as a switch. To get the switch working, I had to edit the sonoff.ino file to use pin mode input instead of input pull-up, and then I reflashed the firmware. I also took this opportunity to add a custom profile in the sonoff template file for the Shelly 1 so you could select it from the drop-down menu. I posted the bin file with the updated parts of the code in the video description so you can use the ESP Flash Easy tool instead of fooling around with the Arduino IDE. I'll be contacting Theo later to see if there's a way we can add a switch for this particular device to not use input pull-up. But for now, my bin file includes Tasmoda 6.1.1 with a fully working profile for the Shelly 1. To hook up the Shelly 1, you'll need to have a small length of white copper wire and two to four lengths of black copper wire that are the same gauge as the incoming line. This is usually 14 gauge for standard 15 amp circuits in your house. I figure this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. Mains voltage can kill you. If you get into your switch box and there's something strange going on that you don't understand, it's time to either get on the internet and start researching to learn about electrical building code and best practices, or it's time to hire a professional. Before disconnecting anything, make sure your breaker is off. Flip the switch before you turn the breaker off to make sure that the lights are functioning, and then flip the breaker for that circuit and then test the switch again. If the lights don't turn on, you're good to go. Disconnect the hotline coming from your breaker to your switch and attach the three new black strands of wire to it using a wire nut. Connect one strand to the L terminal of the Shelly 1 and the other strand to the I terminal. L stands for line voltage and I stands for the input voltage of the relay. The last black wire will connect from the hot bundle to your wall switch. You'll need to have a neutral wire in the box for the Shelly as well. You probably have a bundle of neutrals, so add your short white wire to the neutral bundle using a wire nut. You may need to have a larger wire nut if your old one won't fit with the previous bundle. Attach that neutral to the terminal labeled N on your Shelly. Remove the wire going to the light from the switch and attach it to the O terminal of the Shelly. Replace that wire with a short length of black wire that will go from the SW terminal to the switch. You can see that I chose to just cut the original wire going to my light so that I could attach one end of that black wire to the SW output and the other one to the relay output. Make sure all the screws are secure but not over tightened. Push the Shelly 1 back into the switch box 
and screw the switch back into place and you're all done. You can now configure your switch in Home Assistant just like you would any other Tasmoda device, and it will function exactly the same. So is the Shelly one actually better than the Sonoff Basic? Let's do a little comparison. First, let's consider price. A Shelly one costs about $11 from the Shelly website versus the $6.50 average price of a Sonoff Basic. At the time of publishing this video, searching for Shelly one on Amazon doesn't yield any results. But the CEO of Alterco Robotics sent me some direct links to the Amazon pages for the Shelly One that are priced at $11.90 with Amazon Prime shipping. Those links are down in the description. The Shelly Two, which is a dual 8 amp relay switch with the same form factor as the Shelly One but without the exposed GPIO headers, is also available through those direct links with a price of $19.90 with Prime shipping. That's much better than the price of $35 that comes up from a normal Amazon search. Even with the lower prices and the Amazon Prime shipping, the Sonoff Basic still wins this category. And I think it's gonna be nearly impossible for any company to compete with the crazy low price of a Sonoff Basic. But of course, price isn't the only important thing. Next, let's consider intended use. The Shelly is intended to be inside of a switch box and the Sonoff is intended to be used in line with a wall plug. The Shelly 1 should probably not be used outside of a switch box and based on the fact that the Sonoff Basic has to have its housing modified to fit into a switch box, it probably shouldn't be used in a switch box. There's no clear winner in this category and your use case will decide which product will be best. Now let's recap the hardware differences. The Sonoff Basic has mostly isolated GPIO pins, which allow for the use of low voltage switches and buttons with the Sonoff. As a number of YouTube commenters have pointed out, these switches and buttons have a small chance of becoming energized with mains potentials if a power surge ever compromises the electrical traces on the board. The Shelly One has a high voltage switch terminal, which means it should only be used with high voltage rated switches and those switches have a proper ground connection. The way that the Shelly has implemented switches limits options, but it also adds an amount of safety to the process by ensuring that the switches will always be properly grounded. The Shelly is rated to 16 amps, while the Sonoff Basic is only rated to 10 amps. As I said before, this ensures that a 16 amp circuit breaker will trip before the Shelly One exceeds its rated voltage. The Sonoff doesn't have that feature. The Shelly is also amazingly small, which means that the voltage creep tolerances are very small as well. But that doesn't matter as much since we aren't actually exposed to any non-grounded circuitry once the Shelly is installed in the wall. In this category, I'm going to say that the Shelly comes out clearly ahead from both a safety perspective and a utility perspective. I'm not ready to say that everyone should stop buying the Sonoff Basic and start buying the Shelly One instead, but I do think for the specific application of installation behind an existing switch, the Shelly is clearly the better designed product. If you've been looking for an affordable Tasmoda compatible product to convert your existing dumb switches into smart ones without the need for soldering, you should check out the Shelly One open source. Shelly sent me a couple of other products to try out as well, including the Shelly 2 and the Shelly 4 Pro. I'm currently in the process of running those through their paces and getting Tasmoda properly installed and working on them. I'll have reviews for those devices coming out within the next few weeks. Let me know down in the comments if I missed any important information or if you have other questions about this product. I said it before, but I'm gonna say it one more time. Shelly is not paying me to do this review. I agreed to do it because I thought that it looked like a great new solution for smart home users like me who prefer to have custom firmware and non-cloud-based solutions in their smart homes. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.